Hey, what's up, how's it going? Welcome back. In this episode, you're gonna see how to set up a Cloudflare domain. Then we're also gonna use Cloudflare to terminate SSL for our custom subdomain. So we're gonna set up a wildcard domain on Cloudflare, and then we're gonna use that wildcard domain on Heroku so that we can set up these this subdomain routing, and it's all gonna work with HTTPS and SSL, and it's gonna be a full end-to-end -end encrypted situation. So. Uh, stick around and we're gonna go through all of the steps to go from having no domain to having a uh, full working Cloudflare set up with Heroku and custom domains. All right, here we go. We're gonna log into Cloudflare and then head over to domain registration. And I wanted to find a domain that worked well for a creator platform. So super creatively, I wrote creator platform as the domain name. Uh, and then we found one down here that's pretty affordable uh, for $8.74. So let's just buy that. So we're going to, um, I'm going to blur this out. because This is like entering my personal information as we fill out this form. Uh, but it's just, you know, your normal name, email, phone number, date of birth, blood type social security number, no. It's just the basics um, for, for billing and also for domain registration. If you've set up a domain anywhere else, you'll be familiar with this. Now, the thing that I thought was interesting about Cloudflare versus Google, Google domains is that Cloudflare has this CNAME flatten feature, which was pretty cool and it enabled us to do a lot. So um, yeah, that's why we went with Cloudflare. Now this card input field, we're just gonna take a little sidebar because I was like, oh, whoa, this is cool. Cloudflare is actually using uh, the new Stripe payment element. So how did we know that? Well, we can just crack it open with inspect here and look at some of these class names and we can tell based on uh, these, these class names, but also the fact that it's inside of this, uh, yeah, this hidden internal document that it's using payment elements. So very cool and uh, happy to safely and securely enter my actual credit card number there. And again, yeah, blurring it out just so that we don't get, you know, things taken. All right, we're gonna complete our purchase here at the bottom. That takes just a second. And we've got a new domain. Again, I'm gonna blur out some of the registration information or whatever, but here we go. Let's head over and take a look at the domain that was just created for us on Cloudflare. So the next step is we wanna go over to DNS and set up our DNS registrations for all of the records that we're gonna need. So we'll need several C names. So I always start with a C name for uh, www. So we're gonna drop in www. That's gonna give us a C name that we can use and point to on Heroku. Now using the Heroku CLI, we can say Heroku domains colon add and drop that in. You can also do this from the Heroku dashboard, but this is the way that I've always done it. And this is kind of like the way that I'm familiar with. So this is just the approach that I took. We copy that target that Heroku gave us and paste that into the target field on Cloudflare. If you want to, you can check out the details about the this registration record. Um, and if we were to take that domain and head over to the browser, there's always a little bit of a delay when you are working with uh, domains. So the browser just shows empty for now. If we run Heroku domains, we'll see the list of domains that are set up. And if we were to type Heroku open, this is gonna open the default window for where our Heroku app is running. So right now this is giving us sort of the raw entry point for creator-platform.herokuapp.com but we wanted it to use our actual domain. So let's see if, let's add another record. This is going to be for the Apex domain. So the Apex is just the domain by itself with no subdomain, so creatorplatform.xyz. And we can add Apex domains directly to Heroku the same way that we added our first www domain. Again, that gives us a target that we need to point to. So we're gonna drop that in the target. And I think it's kind of funny where it says target required because it makes me think target acquired. All right, so we've got two C names. This one is saying that because Apex records don't support C names, there's some C name flattening thing. 
Uh, I don't actually know the details of this. I just know that it allows you to use this top level Apex domain uh, without having to do anything fancy with regard to forwarding. Now, if we were to do an NS lookup on our domain, the first one that we set up, we're still in a waiting period. So we're not actually getting any responses back because nothing has propagated yet for that first www subdomain. Finally, we're gonna add a record for a wildcard domain. So this time we need to use the asterisk or the star, and we're also going to register that the same way with Heroku domains. So we're gonna say Heroku domains colon add, and because I'm in ZSH, I had to wrap this in quotes. So we're gonna do star.creatorplatform.xyz. Again, we get a target, we copy our target, bring it back over to uh, Cloudflare, drop that in there and click on save. So now we have three CNAME records and we are looking good. But if we head over to creatorplatform.xyz, we're still seeing this error. It says SSL version or cipher mismatch. And if you look at the details of this, it just shows that the connection to the site is not secure. But if we went and curl dash I, you'll see also that we are being redirected to HTTPS. And if we take the HTTPS version and do curl dash I again, we're still seeing this handshake failure. And so this took me a while to debug. Uh, this is, these are a couple commands that will help you flush DNS if you need to. Um, but by the time I had flushed DNS, I actually took a lunch and then came back and flushed DNS and then looked that up again. And it looks like the domain has propagated. So um, at this point, we now actually have the domain and that is routing us and returning the content that is hosted on Heroku. So that is looking good. Everything seems fine, right? Um, yeah, everything seems fine. But if I try to go and register, I put in my email address and my password now and click on sign in. And I get this error, this 422 uh, HTTP response from Rails. And I'm like, okay, well that means unprocessable entity. Let's go look at the, the server logs to see what's going on. So we can run Heroku logs T, that opens up the server logs. And I find this line in the server logs that says action controller invalid authenticity token. So as part of CSRF checking, we're, Rails is going to look and see if the base URL matches the, the origin header. And in this case, what's happening is Cloudflare is um, talking to the browser with HTTPS, but then when Cloudflare uh, passes the request along to Rails, it's just using HTTP under the hood. That's because we're using that flexible setting inside of, um, inside of, Cloudflare. So in order to fix this, we have to go to SSL and create a new origin certificate. So the host names here are listed out. The cool thing about this origin certificate is it allows the wildcard domain so we can create this certificate. And what we're going to do is take the cert and enter it into Heroku so that we can then encrypt the traffic that's going directly between Cloudflare and Heroku. So we'll have sort of end-to-end -end, um, encryption happening. And instead of Cloudflare making HTTP requests without SSL to Heroku, now Cloudflare will reach out to Heroku using SSL. So we're gonna go into our Heroku dashboard now, in order to set up SSL certs, we needed to change the dyno type to be hobby dynos. Uh, probably just needed to do this for the web dyno, but I also uh, wanted to enable the worker. So I'm gonna go down to, you go to settings and go down to SSL certificates, click on um, create certificate, give it a name. I called mine Cloudflare origin server. Now from Cloudflare, we're gonna copy the origin certificate, that's our public key, or our public certificate, and then we're gonna copy our private key, that's our private certificate, and paste those in. And once we have that set up, we're gonna select all the domains, sure, click on next. All right. 
the SSL certificate is now set up. Very cool. Go back over to the application. Give us some space in the logs. Try again to register. And we have the same error. So the final piece of the puzzle here is that after we set up the origin certificate, we need to go to SSL TLS, go back over to the SSL TLS settings, and we need to enable full encryption mode. I hadn't, I did not try full strict, but I believe that might also work um, because we did set up a Cloudflare origin mm -hmm. CA certificate on the server. But um, so yeah, if you want, you can go ahead and try out full strict, but I ended up just using full. Um, and it worked just fine. So now we head back over to the application, enter in our details and sign in. And that request looks great. That is actually looking pretty good. So now we see signed in successfully. Awesome. Super, super exciting. So after I was able to sign in successfully, I did go through the entire onboarding flow and I went and created my Stripe account. We're gonna do that in another episode. We'll look at kind of going through that onboarding again. I didn't wanna bore you with that because it was sort of unrelated to setting up the domain. So here I am creating a store. I'm setting my subdomain to test, picking a couple different colors. And uh, once I save this and redirect over to this store detail page, you'll see this URL. Now this is sort of the moment of truth. So let's open this up. Boom. Okay. Fantastic. We can click on the lock. We can see the connection is secure and the certificate is valid. That's because it is validated with that wildcard domain uh, certificate. So that is awesome. We're super excited and we can now go through the whole checkout flow. So that is it that wraps up the episode. We are now able to use this custom subdomain routing. Again, we need to go back and add some controls so that not anyone can just add like www as a new store subdomain, that would be bad. We probably wanna also like reserve a few different names like admin or dashboard or account or, you know, just a few that we wouldn't want people to use. But otherwise, I think this is looking really good. I'm super happy about it. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.